Halo. 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 Uh, sir, uh, start your down, sir. Ah, yes, please, Karen. Uh, so now, uh, in, over to sir, participants to introduce us. Uh, uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, dear participants. Good afternoon to all. Uh, welcome back to the afternoon uh, session. And this session will be from 2 to 3.30. And today we have a... Uh, an expert in agriculture, expert in um, uh, um, integrated water resources management technologies and in semi arid tropics, uh, Dr. K. Srinivas Redyar. He is a principal scientist in uh, ICAR CRIDA. Uh, CRIDA, in the sense that uh, it is a central research institute for dryland agriculture. And um, uh, I would like to introduce uh, his credential to the uh, today's participants. Uh, so Dr. K. Srinivas Redyaru, he is a principal scientist, uh, soil and water conservation engineering, ICAR, Central uh, Research Institute for Dryland Agriculture, Hyderabad. It is a national research uh, institute under uh, Indian Council for Agriculture Research. And it has, a, um, they, they, uh, they work on dryland agriculture and agrometeorology. So till now, for the past three days, we are working, uh, we are just listening lectures on climatology, hydroclimatology. Uh, today, sir will be dealing on hydrometeorology also. Uh, he has a PhD from uh, Indian Agriculture Research Institute, PUSA, New Delhi, and Water Technology Center. He is also uh, did MSc from the same institute. And he is a B Agriculture Engineering, College of Agriculture, uh, uh, Agriculture University, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. So, sir, research areas are um, uh, hydrology of micro water sets, sweat modeling, rainwater harvesting, water management system, integrated farm systems for small and marginal farms, um, on farm reservoirs. So, climate change impacts and adaptation strategies that is more important, uh, is a very interested area. Uh, for enhancing productivity in semi-arid tropics and he has also as a model for the developed aqua crop for the bio-industrial watersheds. So he has guided two PhD scholars and one MTech scholar and um, sir has a, um, uh, so many awards, uh, very important I would like to mention here, honorary member board of directors of research ABE California US. ISAE team award for R&D, uh, commendation medal for best research in soil water engineering by ISAE, best agriculture scientist award by the Raitu Bandhu, and ISAE team award for rainwater harvesting to, uh, through farm ponds. And uh, he has a lot of research publications also. He has sir, published in peer-reviewed journals, about 60 journals, uh, presented national and international seminars, uh, more than 100. He has also edited books in English and Hindi, about six books he has edited, and he has also book chapters published about more than 30 journals. And very important, uh, his contribution to the ICAR CRIDA is, he has developed a technologies uh, for the applications of um, uh, farmers in uh, Krishna district uh, AP. So subsurface drainage technology for reducing the coastal salinity into the uh, rice fields of the Krishna district AP. So, a technology developed and it is implemented in the Krishna district and micro irrigation technology assessment for improved water efficiency in different water horticulture groups and um, is also in developing a new software so SCADA based rainfall simulator for protein uh, list uh, list meters for climate change studies and he also developed technology package for rainwater harvesting on the farm through farm farms and then uh, technology uh, package for enhancing water productivity and doubling for farmer in incomes in Telangana, tribal regions of Telangana under ACRP. So to mention there are so many, the very important is uh, climate change analysis for the state of Telangana, assess the dynamics of groundwater pumping and irrigation systems, uh, respect to the energy and CO2 emissions are the main contributions to the, uh, from the, uh, Dr. Srinivas Reddy, principal scientist from Kida. Uh, with this, uh, 
there are many runs into the pages so i briefly discussed about brief um, credentials now i request uh, we have the privilege we have the um, opportunity to listen his lecture uh, today now i request uh, dr srinivas reddy garu please continue with um, uh, his lecture thank you sir yeah thank you professor muni reddy garu <coughs> for introducing me to the audience actually uh, here as part of uh, my uh, topic adaptation potential of integrated rainwater management technologies to climate change impacts in semi arid tropics since i am uh, working on this rain fed agriculture rain fed ecosystems uh, throughout india more particularly about uh, the sandra and telangana more specific to these uh, to our telugu states i would be dealing in two parts here the just the basic concept of what actually climate change means to in a overall situation of the global uh, climate and also to the indian situation which we have and uh, the how how we can go about uh, this i mean uh, how can you at least compensate this climate change impacts by uh, having uh, implementing some uh, rainwater management technologies at the field level then we have the case study uh, implemented in the tribal region of telangana uh, state nagarkarnool <coughs> nagarkarnool district uh, you can see that how we can really uh, differentiate i mean the change i mean uh, for the basically here when you talk about uh, rain fed systems now the climate change is more prone to affect these uh, rain fed regions i think uh, you have been listening to the lectures of uh, dealing with the uh, climate change from different people and different experts from the international forums and uh, even our indian <coughs> people they basically the climate change in simple terms it refers to the long term change of uh, the climate parameters basically the two important things one is temperature and one another is uh, rainfall as far as uh, agriculture is concerned uh, these two are much more important than us actually but uh, <clears throat> uh, apart from these two factors in mean, with reference to agriculture we have many things uh, which actually hydrologically you will have a lot of change in uh, uh, flood scenarios and uh, even drought uh, scenarios and then uh, rise in sea level and uh, even human health and so on so basically now <laughs> as per uh, just i have few slides to show what actually this climate change means with respect to indian conditions based on this ipcc ar5 report the assessment report 5 uh, given by this ipcc international uh, panel on climate change 2014 so they have actually predicted we the temperature rise may exceed uh, 2 degrees to even <coughs> 2 degrees to 5 degrees but now actually the cop countries uh, the recent in the recent meetings happened uh, in the india also somewhere near by our delhi gurgaon they have uh, looking at actually how to control this temperature rise up to 2 degree limit how to limit this temperature global warming potential from uh, Uh, up to 2 degree centigrade what are the measures and what are the policies and what are the technologies what are the uh, even uh, infrastructure which we, we may have to create in the country to <coughs> to restrict to the temperature rise up to 2 degree centigrade by 2000 by the end of the century so on this temperature and then uh, small uh, <coughs> changes in rainfall resulting in more floods droughts are intense rain as well as more frequent and severe heat waves these are the things which we are already experiencing in the uh, globe particularly in the india itself you can see here uh, by 2000 years they are going to very peak i mean more than 400 ppm in this co2 and then this methane is again uh, a big uh, damaging factor in the atmosphere actually which comes from the Uh, basically this animal and then uh, this rice production basically the methane and uh, so on but from the agriculture part uh, this uh, co2 emission basically uh, coming from these uh, soil emissions actually you know when you have the soil has its own uh, uh, 
carbon nitrogen ratio cn to cn ratio which actually emits as a carbon dioxide uh, through the chemical process even if you are applying after uh, uh, this fertilization and so on even this crop crop residue added to that so carbon is added to the soil and naturally you will have emissions from that so with because of this uh, one of the simple things annual number of rainy days have actually decreased you can see here within the andhra and telangana of course it's a united uh, map you can see this greenery most of the area is bound by the greenery so that means uh, our area is also affected by almost uh, in this krishna and the entire rayalaseema nellur and all uh, are affected by this uh, uh, annual rainy days actually because of these ghg emissions so that is where uh, we need to call for immediate steps uh, to control this kind of damage then uh, what actually sources which contribute to this ghg emissions are the basic uh, culprit is the energy sector basically the energy most of the energy is being produced uh, starting Uh, apart from this hydel and uh, the <coughs> hydel uh, this thing hydel and solar and uh, solar of course it is a uh, no emission uh, this uh, that is a green energy but here the coal based uh, energy uh, generation and the companies which are running on coal which actually they are contribute much more to the co2 emissions then of course agriculture forest and other land uses forest of course uh, even sequestration carbon sequestration also they help because of its canopy and then uh, the size of canopy they have and uh, so on so both ways both positive and negative effects are there from the agriculture in terms of carbon dioxide emission and the industry which actually uh, contribute about 21% uh, then followed by transport and then building sector building sector also is a now another coming up area lot of activity under this sector building sector particularly with respect to real real estate it almost geometrically increasing in this country actually for provision of the uh, this uh, housing uh, program to the people of this country so that's why this may also again contribute much more than 6.4% and so now being having all these things now we may have to again uh, uh, go for some standards actually which we need to impose on these kind of uh, industry side or the, the energy producing uh, uh, firms and the transport sector and so on already you know if you see the case of delhi actually in, in india uh, the total pollution there even i mean even we cannot walk properly in the atmosphere that was the kind of situation when we as a student stayed there after 2 uh, 3 years i went there again there was a lot of burning in our own eyes that was the situation in uh, delhi but now because after introduction of cng and all these things uh, this green ways green pathways and then uh, it has come down to the uh, acceptable limit but still this carbon dioxide emissions are much more and the also the delhi is prone with this again uh, the dust formation and all coming from that uh, haryana rajasthan which are very nearby to that so looking into this kind of uh, problems uh, faced in different cities and all particularly water sector is going to be in a big problem so even without this climate change and so on we have already come down to the a physical stress level of 1548 cubic meters per person availability the per capita water availability considering on average uh, uh, from different river basins uh, <coughs> we have already come down to the physical stress level so if it goes on like uh, like this then uh, basically the climate change you know the earlier speaker which somebody was asking actually uh, what was the impact of this uh, co2 emissions and then rainfall annual rainfall totals and all see annual total rainfall may not change but in the previous uh, just last year rainfall if you look at uh, almost uh, june july we june we have the rainfall for sowing period but uh, july august uh, there was almost dry for the two months then september we have heavy rainfall and continued up to october november this is this is the kind of change in the rainfall pattern happening there is a shift in the rainfall uh, now uh, that is where agriculture is going to be much more uh, 
are prone to the difficulties actually because of this kind of uh, erratic distribution of the rainfall and then number of rainy days particularly happening in this uh, uh, <coughs> Indian situation, particularly rain fed areas. Now here, if you look at this uh, Indian uh, climate change, Indian climate change with respect to temperature and then precipitation rainfall, you see our own two Telugu states almost in the uh, range of almost uh, just 100 to 100 to uh, 100 to 240. 240 mm rainfall change would be there actually by 2085, I mean by the end of this century. Similarly here, temperature it varies from 2.5 to 3.5 degrees in our own states, both the Telugu states and Andhra and Telangana. But this almost coastal coastal is more likely to happen about between 3 and 3.5. So this is the where, uh, dear friends, we need to now actually take meticulous planning and meticulous infrastructure, infrastructure to control these uh, uh, effects of climate change in our own uh, India. Uh, in our own states actually. Of course, governments are acting towards that, but still uh, we need to have a perfect planning for this implementation of such schemes actually. Now the, that's what as I earlier told, the expected climate, uh, climate change impacts for India are the changes in weather patterns, of course, the particularly temperature and rainfall, uh, cyclonic disturbances, uh, which I told you, and that is particularly flood uh, creation and so on. The, this you can see being you are in the coastal area, uh, you very frequency of these cyclonic uh, um, uh, events are much more now actually as compared to the previous years. And that is the one thing and uh, sea level rise, of course, in the polar regions, almost uh, these uh, uh, glaciers are melting down because of this uh, temperature rise there. And uh, <clears throat> because of that, people are expecting and also the flood level the floods which we are getting much more, you know, unexpected floods also, they may cause this uh, sea level uh, rise and changes in agriculture. It's of course, uh, the many, many people have modeled uh, <clears throat> based on the climatic criteria and then uh, their uh, own um, uh, the soil and then soil environment and then uh, our own water irrigation, water management principles and so on. People have, <clears throat> but still these are somewhere we have increases and somewhere we have decreases in the country and the changes in fresh water supply this is going to be a big problem because a lot of variation in the water availability the, the, that's why we may particularly in the urban areas uh, we may face a lot of difficulty um, because in the rural india we have almost tanks uh, to mitigate this kind of water sub i mean uh, and the supplies but in the urban areas where we pump a lot of water from the uh, river basins and if we uh, go down with the water supplies then we may be in a problem that, that is the kind of thing uh, uh, is likely to happen so impacts on forests and uh, natural ecosystems of course uh, this also we have then you see here with respect to india the warmer seasons uh, the average temperature is expected to increase by two degrees and much uh, and more also but now they are planning for to restricting this temperature rise to 2 degrees centigrade. See, 1 to 4 degrees centigrade at the extreme ranges. And this is the actually expected changing over the uh, entire globe. Uh, but this 1 to 4 degrees, uh, they want to restrict to 2 degrees. How it can be made? What should be the strategy they are working on? Increased annual precipitation, of course, of course <clears throat> somewhere you have the increased annual precipitation somewhere you have lower values uh, decrease in the annual precipitation but the frequency lower frequency of rainy days this is a, that is what a dry spell so which we get uh, during the uh, season crop season uh, increased intensity is also again problem because once uh, this uh, the, this happening of this uh, increased intensity rainfall not only cause uh, damage the crop as well as the soil itself it degrades entire soil through soil erosion because of the water flows over the ground surface and takes away very really productive soil with the nutrients and so on and, uh, and also uh, <coughs> sometimes you know it depends on the at what stage this particular intensity is falling you see in the flowering stage if at all if you have such a kind of intensified rainfall the entire crop is damaged i mean you 
farmer may not get any any product out of it actually that, that is the kind of damage which we are now looking in the uh, country the, that is another uh, important aspect then cyclonic disturbances lower frequency increased intensity increased risk of storm surges so these are al already happening uh, we are also experiencing these kind of uh, uh, phenomena in the indian conditions particularly the people living along the coast they know very well all these things and the sea level rise you know expected in this in the predicted level 1.3 mm per year on an average uh, <clears throat> overall overall indian situation then fresh water uh, supply high validity uh, high variability predicted in water yields from 50% increase to 40 to 50% reduction you see the variation there is a lot of i mean 50% have increased and again 50% reduction so the, this is a very big uh, variation uh, that's what I was telling, particularly drinking water and then irrigation. Uh, we may uh, really, in that uh, in this variability may jeopardize entire um, uh, the scenario of the water management, particularly in the canal system, dams and all. So we may have to uh, go for the different way of water management with respect to the reduction in the supplies and so on. To uh, basically, Agriculture is the major source of income for our two Telugu states and uh, of course in the coastal we have almost 974 kilometers coastal area uh, where aquaculture is much more uh, uh, economic activity in Andhra as compared to Telangana. Telangana is totally dependent on uh, rainfall only. We don't have any sea uh, coast uh, around this uh, uh, <coughs> around this state. So another forest and natural ecosystems and human health. Of course, here if you, see, if you look at forest, and increased net primary productivity is affected. Then shifting forest borders, specific mix, negative impact and livelihoods and biodiversity. So this is again uh, totally uh, trying to damage the entire ecosystem. That's where you know uh, we see now uh, very frequently we are seeing all these uh, leopards. Uh, and these tigers are coming into the cities you see from the forest this is one example which we are uh, seeing before our eyes and uh, disturbing the people even some elephants are also intruding into the croplands from the forest and damaging entire crop and, and also the human safety is also a bigger problem in that nowadays so to protect this kind of ecosystem and to stay where they are now we need to have uh, the entire, uh, I mean, planning and then uh, uh, the resource availability created within the, uh, the particular places where they actually live happily and then uh, pro protect the human life in where we are in the cities or otherwise in the even villages also. So that kind of approach we may have to evolve by both uh, forest departments and also the state government uh, uh, departments. Then human health. Higher mor <coughs> morbidity and uh, mortality from heat stress and vector and uh, waterborne diseases. So these are all expected because even some skin diseases also may happen uh, because of increased temperature, particularly in our own uh, uh, country, uh, where in particularly in the cold regions, actually in the northern region, they may have a big problem actually. Of course, for us, we can withstand even we have seen about 44, 45 degrees uh, centigrade uh, temperature here. Uh, in Telangana and all, even particularly even in Hyderabad itself, we are we are of course protecting that. But basically, when North India basically they live under uh, um, uh, lower temperatures actually. So those people may face uh, skin problems uh, because of the uh, increase in the temperature and so on. So that is another thing. And uh, <clears throat> lastly, the reduced agriculture product. This is this is one which is very important for the country and also for our Telugu states. The Telugu states are the now rice bowls, uh, the Annapurna uh, states for the entire country. Even <clears throat> after um, creating water resources by Telangana government, uh, now if you see the this Karimnagar and uh, the uh, central part of Telangana, it is almost uh, like our uh, Godavari uh, production system. Earlier it was not that. Now, because the tanks are rejuvenated and also this uh, Kaleshirum project water coming into the different uh, um, uh, reservoirs, 
now the groundwater potential is also increased at the same time they have the surface flows through canals also uh, they are <clears throat> getting so that's why the production levels have tremendously increased particularly rice in telangana and uh, similarly once our polavaram project is completed i think uh, you will see a sea change in the coastal system coastal agriculture production system particularly this godavari uh, and our north coast and also the krishna uh, districts the entire coast entire coast will see a, a total change in the production system when our polavaram project is also completed because water is available so this is the kind of uh, uh, things uh, have but uh, how to not only this is rice is actually you know in if you rice cultivation in a totality is not good actually of course uh, people farmers you know if you have abundantly water immediately they go for uh, uh, rice cultivation because it is uh, it becomes easy for them to cultivate and then take care of that production cycle uh, actually in the thing but here also <clears throat> now we have to um, the in the diversification which we may have to do because the cultivation of paddy is much more uh, uh, the producer of this ch4 and the nitrous oxide and the nitrous oxide particularly nitrous oxide presence in the atmosphere is much more dangerous and it depletes actually available oxygen so this is the kind of and the see methane also methane is also very dangerous to the uh, human uh, uh, human uh, uh, the uh, the air, air air quality and so on so that's where now we need to think on uh, how best we have to bring in actually forcibly either this thing uh, we may have to change uh, some uh, bring crop diversification within the production system also not only of course uh, we need to have the and we may have to design entire strategy of uh, how to what kind of water management strategy at the head reaches of the canal system should happen and what type of uh, water management system with a bit difference in the crop diversification in the middle and then lower stages so these are the uh, things which may, we may have to uh, <coughs> implement in the canal system and moreover in the tanks also they are the large tanks so dear friends now <coughs> actually that is the overall situation uh, what is happening uh, some of the general points uh, which i addressed from the ipcc air 5 report what is going to happen in all these spheres of the uh, uh, situation in the country and now actually if i now i am coming to my own demand on the rain fed agriculture which i am also talking about this semi arid uh, tropics semi arid tropics uh, you know uh, <clears throat> these are all uh, totally climate variant uh, uh jones actually the semi arid tropics suddenly you may have increase in temperature suddenly you may have rainfall and after that you may have lot of gap again one month or 45 days 15 days it varies from 15 days to even two months for the last five years if you look at in the semi arid region in and here that is much more area available in the india not only our telugu states telugu almost 75 percent area is concerned and in the entire peninsula of india is under semi arid except this western part of karnataka and uh, this goa and uh, so on this uh, chennai <coughs> tamil nadu but uh, if you see the andhra almost uh, 80% except uh, this coast on the north coast okay almost in this semi arid tropics so you see it covers the entire madhya pradesh and then gujarat and then this is a uh, uh, this is a, a part of uh, and this is maharashtra madhya pradesh chatisgarh and so on okay so it uh, huge area is under semi arid tropics and you know this is the area which contributes almost 80% of the production of our uh, nutritious pulses oil seeds and the core cereals so country country gets maximum out of this area only but the productivity level is very very low because of because the total area is rain dependent and the agriculture is being practiced on the rain dependence and the rain you know uh, what is going to happen you have listened to that i mean what actually climate change there is totally shift in the uh, rainfall pattern and uh, 
and the distribution is going to be a major problem actually the rainfall distribution in a given uh, crop growth period season uh, is going to be a big problem actually for the this uh, semi arid tropics so now to address this kind of climate change particularly in terms of dry spell uh, dry spells happening and the droughts happening in the area and we have one project agri consortia research platform on water for which i am the <clears throat> uh, the center pa here at uh, icr crida we have taken up this project uh, looking at the the really water shortage in the chenchu colony in the padra mandal nagarakannul districts telangana state and i will show you how actually we totally changed the scene of these uh, chenchus chenchu colony of uh, 60 households okay i have the case study to present before you how this climate change can be uh, brought into greenery with uh, the water efficient water management and then water resource development with a simple technology and with a simple availability and knowledge to the farmers so this is the one which i am going to present before you now we had seen uh, total uh, the vagary of uh, this climate change and now actually how this vagary can be converted into resilient system in the agriculture particularly rain fed areas you can see now so the study area has almost uh, the primary chenchu colony this chenchus as a tribal farmers uh, almost uh, with the 60 uh, 60 households <clears throat> and uh, basically you know the chenchus uh, we all know i mean uh, of course uh, it, may, it may not be known to the international community uh, but uh, the people who uh, might have read this social system and all uh, they may be knowing but this chenchus uh, for andras and the telangana people they are very close to our uh, actually our uh, uh, our own uh, uh, culture actually they come to even our villages and uh, take um, uh, uh, sometimes uh, during that uh, harvesting uh, harvesting period after harvesting they come to our this thing and then take our help and, uh, and they go to but basically they live they live in the forest they depend on the forest produce most uh, most of their livelihoods depends on uh their uh, forest actually but now being uh, the reforms brought out by this government of india and then state governments they have been given the uh, assigned lands or other patta lands to do some agriculture activity for their own survival for own, for their own food security for their own uh, livelihoods so now <coughs> that's where when we visited this uh, petrala chenu village they were actually they were highly socio economically backward with the total malnutrition particularly in the women folk and then children uh, uh, below 1 to 5 years age the soils uh, are sandy loams with the 20 cm this is again a big uh, uh, problem actually uh, the uh, the problem uh, basically soil depth you cannot go for whatever the crop you want into that actually so uh, with this actually only 20 cm below that you have all murram and then stones that is the terrain they have and uh, the organic matter content is also very less than 0.2% and uh, they are highly de- i mean uh, uh, eroded actually because of this intense rainfall and uh, the farmers don't have knowledge about this degradation and all that is another problem about of course we educated them and we made them to adopt the technology and now they are very happy with this uh, kind of technology farmers practice monocropping these are the cotton and sorghum alternatively grown with the yield levels of 2 to 4 quintal per acre and uh, per acre so this is the kind of uh, productivity now you can see how we have improved this actually over the uh, the technology by adopting the technology then occurrence of long dry spells with high intense rain volumes are very common in the region almost uh, 72 to 80 mm per hour intensity is very common in these regions and because of that you have lot of water uh, flowing onto the uh, surface and uh, if you don't harvest that water within the farm it goes out and then joins somewhere in the streams and again goes to the river so that kind of uh, situation and uh, so silent water conservation is a uh, the uh, first main thing which we need to control the resources first the productive soil 
you need to maintain the soil health if you want to have the uh, the improved the productivities as well as the <clears throat> the the resource availability to the plant where actually i mean where it can grow properly and where it can have the proper health where it can have actually the production levels and uh, uh, the grain development and everything is in proper condition so no surface water resource development in the area except very few bore wells and of course these bore wells are also uh, given by the government of telangana uh, in that area now to study this holistically basically science actually how much water is available in that particular area uh, we have selected one uh, uh, local watershed uh, delineated this uh, with the 4700 hectares area in the lower krishna desh in nagarkarnal district covering four tribal dominant villages uh, in the watershed then it has about uh, <clears throat> seasonal rainfall of 630 mm with the major red soils and land use of agriculture forest and wasteland the land use map of course uh, is given by dehradun and uh, that uh, we have used and uh, dug this dugout farm pond you know, this otherwise called as on farm reservoir uh, 24 by 10 by 4 meter as uh, actually as part of uh, on farm rain water harvesting structure within the within the farmers field within the farmers field having about a 600 meter cube capacity just to not to irrigate the entire land but only to address the problem of dry spells in that given uh, patch of 3 acres of land of the farm so now these are the of course we used swat modeling for a runoff potential estimation uh, by taking all those uh, uh, dm and then uh, land use map soil map soil slope map and then uh, this climatic factors and so on so you can see here uh, the kharif both for kharif and rabi we estimated this runoff potential uh, <clears throat> actually because in the northeast rainfall we have this kind of uh, uh, runoff produced here then runoff coefficients also you can see is and there are nothing but the ratios of the uh, rain uh, runoff to the rainfall in different seasons so we have very good coefficients uh, where we can really practice the 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 rainwater harvesting within the farms itself so then we have uh, found out uh, this uh, design rainfall for designing this oifr uh, uh, structure the san farm reservoir otherwise called as a farm pond in the local language <clears throat> now see now we have designed everything and we have uh, uh, scientifically uh, analyzed the entire client rainfall pattern and runoff situation and everything but now having that to implement the technology successfully in the farmers field it's not a joke actually if you really go into the village you have so many problems of course uh, they actually this uh, homogeneity is a big success here we have only uh, only chenchus in this uh, village that may be luck for us actually uh, <clears throat> a systematic approach through capacity building measures and then farmers to Uh, farmer to farmer school for awareness among 60 lakh local households of chenchu primitive in the watershed for adoption of technology and uh, we explained them and uh, two three times not a single time at least three times we went there and then conveyed them about the technology and taught them the lessons and then explained them and then they had we had shown some examples also where the people are adopting such kind of technology and so on so a village level initiation Uh, namely that is where actually we participatory approach see scientists simply i want to do this thing it's not possible in the in particularly <laughs> in our in our indian <laughs> situation <coughs> so we need to now involve these uh, local farmers local people and uh, we have made association that uh, integrated rainwater management association there and uh, they will take the decisions and they will show the location and all based on our approach inputs technical inputs and uh, that is how this uh, project was implemented in the area so now you can see this uh, we which we have uh, done this in the field and of course uh, before that we have analyzed the soil samples what is the actually status of the nutrients available in that particularly uh, macro and micronutrients we prepared soil health card and gave them 
and again uh, capacity building was done to them how to use this card and how to apply that particular recommended dose of fertilizer to the field crops and so on and now the on farm reservoir we have designed this uh, this thing at the lowest corner of the farmers field we have the farmers field like this uh, this area and uh, uh, almost 3 acres land we have this is about 600 meter cube 24 by 10 uh, by 3.5 uh, meter uh, dimensions and the entire you know we have uh, um, implemented even uh, this contour bonding uh, across this uh, 3 acres to uh, reduce the soil erosion and channelize the water flow uh, to the inlet of this farm pond because any investment you make with farmer, it is very costly. I mean, uh, per unit uh, uh, acreage a farmer has. That's why farmers are unable to spend on their own, except the big farmers. But uh, these, these kind of three acres, two acres, and then uh, uh, four or five acres people, uh, they cannot spend on their own the kind of uh, investment which you may have to put in. So that that's why even government puts away in, you should not waste a single drop of water uh, going out of the field. So that should come here and then uh, we should have that what actually designed capacity uh, must be there in the uh, as a water harvesting. So that kind of approach we followed here and then uh, did that. Then again, uh, once you know, now we have developed the water resource for the farm size of three acres and then uh, then how to use this water efficiently in the field crops. That is again uh, uh, very, very important. So what we have designed here is, uh, instead of using sprinklers, uh, six and the uh, six and seven uh, sprinklers uh, together, and they have may have to shift uh, several times. And instead of that, we used and uh, designed a portable rain gun irrigation system uh, with the, which can operate with the 2.5. I mean, on at, at par with your sprinkler operating pressure, and it can irrigate about uh, half acre, half acre at a time. So the spray diameter is about 20, uh, spray radius is 24 meters and about uh, 120, um, <coughs> 240, 240 liters per minute discharge at 2.5 kg per centimeter square. So it, it covers almost uh, 1089 meters square. So this is the kind of approach we adopted there. And again, this technology, how to use it efficiently and how to uh, make them uh, use it and uh, at what stage they have to apply water and what dry spell they have to use this water and that i mean uh, see dry spell actually people in, in the <coughs> standard norms of this drought definition uh, they call it as a 21 days in only after 21 days uh, you have to implement uh, that kind of strategy the drought they declare drought so 20, not 21 days if you even within uh, within 10 days, uh, if you see the crop, almost uh, soil mature, it will be at uh, less than your, I mean, wilting, pay, uh, wilting percentage. The, the, this is the kind of uh, phenomena we have, actually. If you go by the definition of the soil mature, your drought may, uh, your drought definition uh, goes down, actually, uh, that duration. So, 10 days, 10 days are weekly interval is, now that means immediately after one week of rain, no rainfall, you, you have to necessarily give the rain, I mean, some irrigation, protective irrigation to save the crop. So that kind of approach we used there. And uh, that too, only two critical irrigations we have, ta we have taken. But unfortunately, <clears throat> in this area, for the last five years, we have been doing this action research program. Uh, if you look at the rainfall distribution, which I am going to show, actually <clears throat> immediately after germination, there is al always a long dry spell. Actually, protecting crop itself is a big question mark. If you leave the crop immediately after germination without rainfall for almost 15 to 20 days, and uh, your crop is nowhere actually. Even after that, you may get rainfall, but with that rainfall, it may grow. Uh, just like we targeted the growth, you know. So that is the kind of uh, thing, but uh, the production level and the productivity level will be very, very poor. Uh, uh, that is why if you have, a <coughs> and another thing, you know, you have a pre-monsoon rainfall events actually in this region. So we, 
even if you have two events the our farm uh, farm pond or on farm reservoir is getting filled so that means immediately you have the water available at your disposal and you can irrigate the crop with the deficient irrigation levels of 30 mm or so so that the crop can be saved and then you can get at least uh, uh, medium to high yields in the area that i will show you how we have done on the productive levels and all you see here in the first year when uh, we introduced this project in the area uh, you see uh, this is this is the long dry spell they, where they have this rainfall almost less than 10 mm but still you have a lot of uh, dry spell actually this is the somewhere uh, somewhere here uh, this crop is grown and then after that this is entire period is really dry spell but immediately after 34th week onwards we have good dry i mean rainfall okay see that means we have to see that the crop is survived and you know within this period because if i go for this pulse crop pulse crop is hardly 60 days to 90 days uh, period is a growth period so flowering also comes immediately after 30 days so if if, if, if uh, uh, dry spell comes in the flowering stage the entire i mean the production loss is there actually if you don't irrigate so that is where advantage of this rainwater harvesting comes in to at least uh, mitigate uh, this kind of dry spells by using uh, the rainwater harvesting in the farm so that is the advantage in the second year again uh, you see here it's a totally different pattern of rainfall again here also again this is the sowing date maybe and uh, i mean in the 24th week but again three weeks immediately after germination there was no uh, rainfall almost one month rainfall was not there even this uh, on 28th week though you see less than 10 mm uh, that too in the weekly so it doesn't make much difference to the crop so <clears throat> uh, that's why the, this is the kind of uh, dry spells where actually i mean people talk about uh, a chronic drought and all in the, in the particular in the rain fed agriculture it happens so these are the things which we need to actually small reservoirs built up in the within the this thing because we know no no <coughs> india cannot make entire land irrigated when that is a damn sure because within this uh, irrigation potential created and used itself with the 10 million hectares gap is there so because of so much problem in the uh use and then its maintenance and so on so uh, dear friends the rain fed if you want to survive which contributes for this uh, so much uh, uh, oil seeds and then uh, production of these oil seeds and then pulses and then both cereals which are healthy and also very nutritious we need to <coughs> have a some mission mode of uh, government mission program to actually create this kind of uh, small reservoirs within the based on the designed based on the catchment area and then uh, their area uh, and the, the localized uh, runoff potential and so on so this is my appeal to all the people now scientific community to think in this direction because the rainfall is highly um, localized <coughs> localized localized and variability within 1 to 2 kilometers do you see the lot of change actually in the rainfall intensities and duration and also the amount of rainfall so that is the change actually we are already experiencing so to counter this kind of change what type of strategy and what type of uh, uh, this thing but though the simple technology but it works very well in this region that's what i want to make this thing and here you see here is totally different from the apart from those three uh, for last two years everywhere you have the dry spell between two uh, rainfall events and here it is shown because <clears throat> the 24th week and then from there again you have some good rainfall but here again a lot of uh, difference and here also there is a lot of difference you see so the, these two uh, critical irrigations we have given to the crop and the save the crop in that again 2019 20 again uh, the same uh, thing which i was telling you in the beginning here actually there is a is almost dry spell entire for two months immediately after germination then after september august till august 
end there was no rainfall but in september you have very good that is actually september is a month where harvesting takes place actually that uh, i mean uh, the product i mean produce development the grain development and everything happens during that period only but heavy rainfall damages all these uh, uh, parameters and affects the uh, naturally the crop production and the farmer is under loss so <clears throat> that's why if you maintain uh, if you can really manage these two critical irrigations during you can manage these dry spells actually farmer will be safe to safeguard their crop and also production and uh, we can really show that uh, how productivity can be improved here you see here below the graph you can see here in, in 2019 20 uh, the farmer we actually we adopted here integrated farming system module integrated farming system means uh, introduction of uh, uh, diversified cropping system in the place of mono cropping plus again uh, this goat and uh, uh, this uh, rams <coughs> uh, cultivation uh, this thing cultivation fodder and all we have introduced and some vegetables which uh, they never used to grow in that area we have introduced because water is there they, in a small area of uh, uh, 400 meters square like <coughs> 400 meters square point Point uh, one acre, point one acre, point one acre, but uh, it contributed uh, totally different way to the entire that is sixty households, and they started eating all vegetables and all. So this is the technology module uh, which I, I talked about. Uh, one is the water resource development on farm reservoir, and then the pressurized irrigation system. Uh, this is for efficient use of water again to the field crops. these are uh, this is the technology module but the cropping the first uh, year we tried with the black gram uh, pulse based uh, integrated farming system and the remaining other 3 years we have this uh, cotton based cotton is the mostly grown and in telangana it, uh, even government itself is uh, uh, recommending for the cultivation of this uh, uh, cotton in the place of rice and all so so farmers generally tend to go for uh, cotton at least some area on the cotton most of the area on the cotton and the remaining we can diversify out of uh, <clears throat> this thing so but uh, you know the change in the farmers attitude which is brought actually in the beginning in the beginning itself he was hesitant to use that water itself in the farm pond because he thinks that uh, if i use water that water will not be there in the farm pond but he does not know <laughs> if rain comes again same water comes into that and then uh, fills it up and uh, that was the kind of very old thinking and uh, old uh, uh, way of i mean because they changes their knowledge level is also very poor so <clears throat> when from that situation now this man uh, slowly first he went for that black gram based uh, uh, the farming system and second year he went for cotton and third year also he went for cotton but in third year i requested him to replace the cotton with some other crop cereals and all but he did not agree uh, but he suffered that third year was a very drought year actually uh, <clears throat> then um, the uh, final year in 2019 20 uh, again uh, he himself went for five crops one is a uh, main crop of cotton and then ashwagandha medical crop and this thing medicinal crop and then third thing is uh, intercropping of uh, uh, these coarse cereals and uh, uh, coarse i mean uh, pulses and uh, coarse cereals and then another thing is uh, vegetables then this fodder and of course these are all very common every year they have this thing so and uh, apart from this, this is livestock is also there we have actually uh, given some uh, the mineral blocks to Uh, improve their health and also improve their weight so that farmer gets money out of their sale so that kind of uh, uh, intervention small intervention but innovative with the farmers and we have introduced there and you now you can see this table you know, the farmer actually with the mono cropping <coughs> which is not at all sustainable he used to get about 14000 rupees okay for these three acres but now with the introduction of new diversification new crop diversification you see that almost 29100 rupees this here we have not 
included this cost of the structure and then cost of the irrigation cost and all i will show you in the different uh, uh, graphs and then uh, by diversifying simply sorghum will give him only carbohydrates but protein is very less but by introducing black gram uh, protein is 93.7 kg almost uh, three times more than that availability and then of course carbohydrates is also there equivalent so this is the kind of where i think because malnutrition is uh, again one issue which we have to address among the uh, the farmers actually from such a poor people poor community <clears throat> now water productivity in different crops you can see here tomato and all is all and earlier uh, nothing used to be there whatever we got this productivity is an additional to the existing to that monocropping system and all okay so in uh, all different years we have very good uh, uh, productivity as compared to rain fed now in the third year actually uh, third year in second year cotton based system actually cotton gives in very less uh, almost it is a deficit actually 3600 rupees is a deficit for the system but whereas this man got about 1 lakh rupees <coughs> net benefit actually right the net income to a farmer was 9 lakh almost 1 lakh rupees out of the system uh, he got in the second year in 1920 you can see the water productivity with bc ratio the maximum which he got i mean as much as diversification he does and he has actually protecting his nutritional security as well as uh, the food security to the entire that uh, colony itself because he contributes uh, uh, selling of that uh, uh, vegetables coming out of that even small area Uh, to all people in within the community itself and earns almost 10000 to 40000 rupees income see this is the total uh, picture of uh, the entire study over the four years 2016 to 2019 20 and you can see here the drought intensity medium drought normal second year is normal and severe drought and here also severe and fourth year actually you know which i am talking though we had a good rainfall uh, at the end of the season september but this rainfall does not come into the growing period you know you see but actually it is a drought period because of the shift in the rainfall uh, had uh, this rainfall distributed in the actually crop season the crop yield should have been totally different actually right so this is the kind of uh, climate change this is all uh, due to in induced due to the climate variability and the kind of uh, the change in the rain i mean this rainfall patterns happening in the because of the climate change so how to address this change is a really big question now the crop diversification water resource development then water management system and these are the three things which actually apart from uh, fertilizer and uh, so on uh, and of course uh, <clears throat> the insects and pesticides of course even farmer himself knows very well about what to spray and what not to spray and all these things but of course uh, the chemical sprays in need to be again changed by introducing integrated pest management integrated uh, uh, insecticide management systems and so on so organic products uh, we have to bring it and then reduce that chemical uh, uh, pollution also see the thing is i mean uh, goes on increasing almost uh, this thing and they, 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 these net benefits are based on entire cost analysis of uh, this uh, creating infrastructure for the uh, on farm reservoir and also the irrigation system development and everything so so <clears throat> you see the farmer gets at least uh, the 97000 uh, rupees net income even after uh, meeting the entire expenditure of this thing and the economic analysis a lot of uh, um, what is not double bloody you can um, triple also the <laughs> income of the farmer but <clears throat> now actually you know the markets are very very important actually if you have this kind of technology then one more thing actually we have in mind is see the solar uh, power production if we have such a structures you know intensity of such a structures in a given area 
we can cover with uh, these uh, solar panels and produce uh, solar energy and connect to the grid i mean you don't need to purchase any kind of the, and this this model can easily uh, reduce evaporation losses as well as uh, the additional solar energy even solar pumping also you can use without using any diesel or electricity and so on so three purposes it can really make and uh, this is worth trying actually green energy uh, for such kind of systems but <coughs> we need to have this kind of technology in the intensified mode particularly in the rain feds rain feds are very lucrative for this solar green energy uh, production uh, apart from from uh, and uh, people are now actually advocating for use of such kind of technology so because we are short of uh, the coal uh, resource and the natural resources and so on so dear friends though the technology looks very simple but uh, it has tremendous effect on addressing the poverty malnutrition and also the water uh, severity in the area and also the crop and diversification and the particularly in the terms of monetary value and you see here economic analysis uh, for all different systems in different years from the rain fed and this is actually drought in a drought system which we have with the different deviations see <clears throat> here in the last year because of the much more uh, diversification he got very good benefits here so that is how actually system bc ratio also improved in the last year but it of course it has benefit over this thing. and at a different uh, full cost means uh, owned by the farmer himself and the 50% subsidy if the government provides now somewhere governments are offering 100% subsidy also so we have worked out for three levels and uh, in three levels we have the uh, bc ratio improved and it is increasing in all the cropping systems and another thing uh, actually you know when we uh, are doing this uh, surface water harvesting particularly pumping systems uh, is a big problem because you have the silt load available along with the water because it's a surface water uh, in the rain feds particularly these uh, uh, sandy soils it comes with a lot of uh, sand and the silt <clears throat> so that actually you know we have made a floating pump device here by using simple uh, uh, tube mechanism uh, by using buoyancy principles and you know uh, with 1 meter depth so within uh, immediately after collecting this water within uh, 15 days within 2 weeks period that silt level goes down and uh, you can have very clear water on the uh, surface i mean surface up to 1 meter level so that water can be very easily pumped to uh, your micro irrigation systems where you can uh, operate uh, nozzles actually the drip and uh, micro sprinklers and all for the uh, this uh, <clears throat> vegetable production and you see the i mean you know you, you don't find cultivation of these uh, tomato chili and all in the Uh, rain fed where uh, in the rain fed uh, uh, system is followed but when you have water you can really go for this on at least on small area and uh, you can earn lot of money in this section vegetables and also by adopting such a technology solar based uh, uh, for solar powered energy systems pumping systems the co2 emissions also we can reduce almost 66.5 kg for irrigating karif under the in a small area of one acre so that is the uh, advantage if you want to contend the climate change actually now uh, this is of course uh, radiation we have also optimized the irrigation scheduling for micro irrigation based on this energy availability and uh, how how many hours he has to run that uh, to meet the crop water requirement of the uh, vegetables this is another technology based on buoyancy principle uh, by using a tubular uh, tubular structure with the solar panels mounting upon that and also this this uh, uh, platform again is used to control the evaporation rates at the same time the vegetables of the farmer can easily grow within this platform also this is also beneficial leafy vegetables he can easily grow so that is how we had shown that farmer uh, should not waste any 
particularly in the rain fields he should have intensified cultivation then only he gets good amount of money and you know at least uh, uh, a farmer with four people in you know, as a family he should at least have minimum 2 to 2.5 lakhs net benefit if he wants to really survive with this kind of uh, children education and then their <laughs> their food requirements and then uh, this <laughs> cloth requirement everything and so on so uh, if you want really um, to get that kind of money for each farmer a small particularly with the small areas now we need to go for this such things so coming to the conclusions actually if you look at here the ofr technology with the efficient water management system can provide solution to mitigate intermittent droughts between the critical stages of the crops effectively with application depth of 30 mm water uh, design of proper integrated farming system modules and a ofr with the deficient irrigation strategy would enhance not only water productivity by decreasing water footprints and energy resulting into maximum net profit to the farmer in the small holdings 1 to 5 acres land development of <coughs> development of multi purpose floating type sol- uh, solar pumping system will help in to use run of water with micro irrigation with minimum silt load and it will control evaporation rate up to 60% besides having an additional income to a farmer by producing leafy vegetables in the trays and platform then uh, finally the broad uh, recommendation is soil and water conservation with on farm rainwater harvesting and efficient use technology can give maximum resilience to climate change and reduce the ghg emissions in semi arid tropics so with all these points uh, <clears throat> dear friends now actually in the rain fields actually if farmers want to you know these are all the highly vulnerable uh, areas these semi arid tropics and here only most of the industry industries goes and a uh, lot of uh, the urban uh, construction activity goes on and everything happens here only but uh, these are the fields which we need to protect and then uh, cultivate with the technology modules and because they are the one which contribute to the entire country's bowl of nutritious food security so with this uh, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity <clears throat> so let us save water and then conserve this uh, resource for uh, protecting our future generations as well as our entire environment thank you very much any questions hello hello sir vinpistunda hello vinpistunda sir ah vinpistunde thank you <laughs> sir okka nimisham aagandi question lo vastayi meeku scroll avutayi ah yes sir please uh, dear participants you can have any questions or clarifications please text the questions and dr reddy will be srinivas reddy will be happy to answer that sir there is one question yeah sir question i mean kanipistunda meeku ye screen meeda raavadam ledhe vastundi as the farm reservoir is created at low land of the farm mm. how the irrigation has been done from this water to the farm as in the okay. case gravity irrigation is not possible yeah why we need to have gravity actually now here we are advocating efficient use of water by using pressurized irrigation system this is a piping piping irrigation actually just like sprinkler and all so sprinkler sprinkler doesn't need to have any gravity flow only in the canal system you need gravity a question kanipistunda sir meeku question kanipiyadam ledhu ma adi minimize cheyalem screen sir idi idha ah yes sir yes. okay uh, adhi sir question uh, please answer for that actually here <clears throat> any water harvesting structure must be created at the lowest level of where actually entire uh, the water yield concentration happens in a field because farmer need to store entire water created from his own farm actually 
right because uh, we are using some uh, investment in creating such kind of structure within the farm so to collect that the entire each and every drop of water the structure has to be created and uh, basically when when such kind of uh, is used and naturally we need to pump this water actually back uh, again to the uh, catchment area so pumping systems are used actually that's what i told you the solar pumping is one option where you don't need to use any energy and all but you can very well uh, irrigate uh, uh, the catchment with the green energy that we had shown uh, the experimental results also yeah <laughs> it's a good question but <laughs> uh dear srijani actually you know <clears throat> scada is a uh, uh, scada you know the software uh, full form supervisory control for data acquisition supervisory control for data acquisition software actually right so the scada actually as such it has a sensory part uh, as one side and all these sensor inputs can be uh, connected to your scada screens you can see the entire data process flow from each and every point uh, you know, particularly if you look at the um, the <clears throat> if you look at the your uh, uh, soil parameters particularly the soil hydraulic conductivity right or soil infiltration or otherwise soil structure soil porosity and all these parameters will contribute to the analysis of your ground water recharge so such kind of uh, parameters you can easily connect to scada and uh, do the analysis on that i mean you get the values on the screen itself are vaishnavi is a good question civil engineers have got a lot of knowledge in this actually to in designing of a buoyancy principles and so on making floating platforms if you look into the actually the external i mean our international uh, initiatives they have uh, used this even uh, big big lakes and uh, those surfaces with the floating floating solar panel actually these can be designed just simply by based on basic principles of buoyancy it is not a problem but the materials which you have to use in construction of that platform which we need to have to select the uh, the low density or light density uh, material that is the thing you can very well do civil engineers far better <laughs> you can very well do that kind of uh, system if paddy cultivation produces too much ch4 can we not collect and use this to produce energy uh so the atmosphere is less polluted and we simultaneously get energy <clears throat> yeah if you can collect really it can uh, lead to um, uh, the requirements of entire equipping energy can be made with the ch4 methane but how to collect this thing because these crops are grown in open area from the open area how do you collect this ch4 it emits from each and every point of your land so the actually basically it goes into atmosphere from the atmosphere if you want to collect it's a big uh, again uh, the technology which we may have to use now there are people uh, even from your uh, humidity people are making power you know so that can <laughs> but <clears throat> in a large scale it becomes very costly too costly i think this question has been answered this is the first question yeah yeah how to so estimate the discharge of an engaged catchment using this is actually by analyzing geomorphological parameters of the watershed and uh, you can create some equation based on these uh, parameter analysis and uh, 
calculate the run. There are uh, so many procedures to uh, calculate this ungaged catchment uh, runoff uh, by modeling. Simple uh, by <coughs> rank at modeling. Any more? Uh, yes, thank you. Charangar, you stop the live. Charangar, please stop the live.